speak today of an act of worship that we can describe as being the introduction to prophethood. An act of worship that we can describe as being paradise on earth. An act of worship that is not average in the least. But it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity. We speak today of none other than Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the famous hadith which I'm sure you have come across. It is that narration which was recorded by Imam Tirmidhi in his jami' on the authority of Abi Umamat al-Bahili that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi qiyami layli, fa innahu da'bu salihina min qablikum. وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَمَكْفَرَةٌ عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْهَاتٌ عَنِ الْإِثْمِ He said, uphold the night prayer. Take care of the night prayer because, memorize these three phrases now, because it is the way of the righteous people before you. And it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. And it is a means of erasing sins. And it is a means of guarding you from sins. La ilaha illallah. This one hadith is sufficient on its own to transform our perception towards this act of worship. So that we never ever see it the same way again. But what is the night prayer? Is it limited to bowing and prostrating in the night? Is it an act of ibadah that is exclusive to the month of Ramadan? No, the hadith that we just heard makes it clear that this is something altogether different. What is Qiyamul Layl? Let us analyze now and examine the hadith that we just heard phrase by phrase. What was the first phrase? Do you remember? فَإِنَّهُ دَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ It is the way of the righteous people before you. If we speak of the righteous people, then how dare any human being mention any name before the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him in one of the earliest chapters of the Quran given to him early in the seerah, early in Mecca, chapter 73 of the Quran, Surah Al Muzzammil. Allah Almighty says to him, Qumi layla illa qalila. Get up and pray at night except a small amount of it. Nisfahu awun minhu qalila. Half of the night pray it. Or a little bit less than that. أو زد عليه ورتيل القرآن ترتيلا. Or pray more than that if you wish and recite the Quran in a measured recitation. Who is awake except a few? It is the way of the righteous people before us. So that is the night prayer. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal had a guest who visited him once, and he was a student of Hadith. And so Imam Ahmad wanted to host him that night and allow him to spend the evening with him. And so he prepared for him a container of water so that he could do his wudu when he wants to pray at night. The next morning Imam Ahmad came to wake him up and he noticed that the container of water had been unmoved. He hadn't prayed at night. So Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi was shocked and he said, Subhanallah, talibu hadithin la yakunu lahu wirdun min al-layl. He said, Subhanallah, I have never seen this before. A student of hadith who does not have a portion of night prayer? A student of hadith who doesn't pray at night? And we could repeat the exact same words by saying, Subhanallah, an ISOC committee member, a FOSIS member, a masjid committee member who does not pray at night? A Muslim parent who wants to raise Muslim children who are protected from the temptations and doubtful matters out there in society, and he or she doesn't pray at night? An imam, a khatib, an attendee of a halaqa, a deliverer of a halaqa, a, a person who shares Islamic reminders on Facebook, and does not have a portion of night prayer? Somebody who believes that the squeeze of the grave is real, and believes that he shall see the face of the angel of death, and believes on the day of judgment that will be 50,000 years long and does not have prayer at night? How can that be? So this is phrase number one from the hadith. Do you remember it? إِنَّهُ دَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ It is the way of the righteous people before you. What was phrase, phrase number two? He said, 
if you remember وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ and it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. For those who ask about a staircase that leads to the pleasure of Allah, for those who inquire about one of the shortest routes that lead to the acceptance of Allah, I say that you will find such a staircase in the middle of the night. Perhaps dear brothers and sisters, this is one of the secrets why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu offers so much to those men and women who pray at night. Because it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. Those who discipline themselves to pray, whether after Salatul Isha straight away or in the later parts of the night before Fajr, this is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. As he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he has offered so much in thanks, so much as a reward. What is the reward? You're probably now thinking, what is the reward of praying at night? And the answer to this question is, we don't fully know. Yeah, it's been kept a secret. For the most part, it is hidden. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in one of the most beautiful ayat, Surah Al-Sajda, Allah Almighty says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ Their sides forsake their beds. Their sides forsake their beds. They don't want to sleep. How come? يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا because they are calling their Lord out of fear and hope. And from the money we've given them, they are spending. So, O oh Allah, what is the reward that you have offered them? Tell us, O oh Allah, in the ayah after it. The answer is, Allah says, therefore, no soul, no soul, knows of the delights of the eyes that have been hidden for it as a reward for what they used to do. What is the reward of those who call upon Allah Almighty and cry to Him and beg for their needs and prostrate at the door of Allah Almighty every evening? What is their reward? Allah Almighty, no soul has any knowledge of this. It's a prize, a surprise for them on the Day of Judgment. Why has it been kept a surprise? Somebody may ask. Imam ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, he takes a stab at the answer. And he says, Ta'ammal. Kayfa akhfa Allahu? Ta'ammal. Kayfa qabala Allahu? Ma akhfawhu min qiyamin lillayli? Bil jazai alladhi akhfahu anhum mimma la ta'lamuhu nafs. He said, because the same way that they would make an effort to pray at night and to not allow anybody to see their good deeds, Allah Almighty will reward them by giving them a reward, by giving them a reward that no human being has ever seen. They made an effort to hide their good deeds by praying at night. So Allah Almighty has thanked them and compensated them by giving them a reward that is also hidden. However, does this mean that we don't know at all what the people of the night are going to be given on the Day of Judgment? We have no perception of the reward in Jannah for them? No, no, we do have some perception. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ثَلَاثَةٌ يُحِبُّهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ وَيَضْحَكُ إِلَيْهِمْ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُ بِهِمْ There are three categories of people whom Allah Almighty loves. And He smiles at them. Imagine Allah, Al-Malik, the King, Al-Rabb, the Kumpala, Al-Jabbar, smiling at you. What must they have done to deserve the smile of Allah Al-Aziz, the Most Mighty? He said there are three people whom Allah Almighty loves. And He smiles at them and He is happy with them. And He mentioned one of the three people, one of the three categories as being as follows. وَمَنْ لَهُمْ رَأَةٌ حَسْنًا وَفِرَاشٌ لَيِّنٌ حَسَنٌ فَيَقُومُ وَيُصَلِّي لِلَّهِ بِاللَّيْلِ فَيَقُولُ يَعْنِي الرَّبِّ يَذَرُ شَهْوَتَهُ وَيَذْكُرُنِي وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَقَدْ One of the three categories he says is a person who has a beautiful wife, a beautiful spouse and a very comfortable soft bedding. But then in the middle of the night he gets up and he leaves his spouse, leaves his desire to remember Allah. So Allah Almighty will say to his angels, look at how my slave has left his bed and his desire in order to remember me. And if he wanted, he could have continued sleeping. Allah Almighty smiles at such a person. 
So you may think now, okay, what is the significance of the smile of Allah? What happens when Allah Jalla Jalaluhu smiles at a person? Imam Ahmad narrates in his Musnad that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said answering this question, وَلَوْ ضَحِكَ رَبُّكَ لِعَبْدٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَلَا حِسَابَ عَلَيْهِ when your Lord smiles at a person, he said, when your Lord smiles at a person in the life of this world, he will not have any accountability on the day of judgment. Backdoor entrance into Jannah. All of the horrors that you and I hear about Yom Al Qiyamah, it doesn't apply to these people because they will not be held accountable. لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر. The ultimate terror, the terror of Yom Al Qiyamah, will not grieve them in the least. This is what happens when Allah smiles at a person. And one of the three people whom Allah smiles at is a person who gets up, remembers Allah Almighty, and leaves his comfort, leaves his jail bed, leaves his beautiful spouse for short moments to glorify Allah Jalla Jalalu. Some of the reward Allah Almighty has prepared for them. What was phrase number three? He said, and the night prayer is a means of erasing sins and is a means of protecting you from sins. Ya Allah. This is a profound statement, brothers and sisters. Dear brother, dear sister, if you have accumulated certain sins today or yesterday or at some point in your past, sins that you are so scared that Allah Almighty is going to remind you about them on the day of standing, then those sins can be erased at night. If you also have sins that you are afraid that you're going to redo sometime in the future because they're so addictive, they're so appealing, they look so good. You are afraid that after your repentance, you're going to go back to them. You will find your shield and I will find my shield in the night. It is a means of erasing sins, meaning of the past and a means of protection from sins, meaning from the future. All of that is found in the night. La ilaha illallah. And perhaps this is one of the secrets, dear brothers and sisters, why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refers to the night prayer as sharaful mu'min, the honor of the believer. Because a person who minimizes his sin is honored in the eyes of Allah. It will take time, dear brothers and sisters, until you and I are able to unlock that sweetness. But when it comes, we will not want to replace it for any other joy in existence. It is really a paradise on earth. So congratulations to those who illuminate their graves before they are leveled inside of it. Congratulations to those who please their Lord before they meet Him. Congratulations to those who pray before they are prayed upon. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make us the people of the night, to make salah and siyam and tawheed and islam sweeter to us than cold water. We ask Allah Almighty to forgive us and to forgive our mothers and fathers and to make our homes in firdaus al-a'la. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil